Joining us now, OutKick founder Clay Travis. Clay, what the hell is going on at Target? Do they not? Is anybody in charge over there? Clearly, the children are running this company. That this would fall through the cracks. Well, Look, I, I think this is why the Bud Light uh, example is so important. And thank you guys for having me on. Good to see you again. Uh, because what Bud Light represents is the first time that I can remember, really, in sort of the modern era where a company has to think, hey, let's be careful. Let's not go too far left wing. Let's not go too far woke because it could destabilize, debilitate, destroy the overall brand of our company. And I guarantee you right now, they're having conversations about let's not get Bud Lighted in uh, all of these different boardrooms as it pertains to marketing decisions. And I think Target has lost that lesson, right? Um, and I understand there are people out there, probably you guys are part of them, where you sit around and you say, hey, I don't want to have to think about the political alliances and allegiances of the beer that I drink or of the department store that I go into or of the streaming service that I subscribe to. But I think things have gone so far left wing that we have to be throwing punches back now in an effort to just say, hey, how about you just go back to selling things in a department store that are normal for a normal audience as opposed to trying to make political statements with your product. You know, uh, just to, just yeah, to be clear, these products are not being sold at Target, but Target is selling products made by the same designer who apparently just wants to uh, destroy straight people. And I'm be, I'm overstating that. But, but, go ahead, but, but I think it's fair to say Target maybe didn't know that this was a Satan loving designer that they have his products in the store. That's possible. But if you once once you find out that you got a Satan loving dude who's making merch for your store, you might go, hey, we're going to disavow this guy because we're not Satan lovers ourselves at Target. And by the way, a lot of Christians shop here. That would make sense. But we haven't heard anything from Target yet. Well, and look, guys, I actually think regardless of this relationship with the designer, we know that Target is selling these bathing suits yeah. that allow men to pretend that they are women in women's bathing suits and hide their genitals. I mean, I, I'm not an expert in bathing suits. Uh, I know that lots of women <laughs> think, hey, I hope I don't look fat in this uh, bathing suit. I hope that I'm not showing too much cleavage. I've got a wife, so I sometimes am involved in... Uh, in checking some of these things out. And by As the way, she's claim. never looked fat in any bathing suit for the record uh, that she's ever tried on in her life. But I don't ever remember a woman saying, hey, make sure my penis doesn't show up too much in this bathing suit. <laughs> I just can't imagine <laughs> that there's that much of a demand for men who want to wear women's bathing suits and then also hide their penises while doing so, that seems like a really limited marketplace, not one where there's a lot of money to be made. Well, Adidas is making women's bathing suits modeled by men, and that's the attraction is you can see the junk. That was how they were. Yeah. But then, again, they're making you forget that the company was founded by Nazis. I guess that was part of that promotion. Uh, you know what I'll also say in those Adidas shirts, uh, sorry, you know, uh, swimsuits, mm -hmm. there was chest hair in the photo. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, a women's bathing suit with chest hair is a bad combo. I'm just going to toss yeah. that out. I can't imagine, again, that there's very much of a marketplace of men or women yeah. saying, hey, you know what really is a sexy look for the pool this summer in the right. beach? Yeah. I want uh, one women's of those. bathing suit replete right. with chest hair. Forget the yeah. Nazi yeah. roots. I don't think anybody's begging for either of us to wear those. Uh, real quick, a high school track meet in California sparking major controversy. A female athlete placed fourth after losing a shot at the state championship to a transgender track runner much to discuss here. Sean, jump in here. Yeah, no, what, what's your, is this going to end, Trey, uh, Clay? I mean, time and time again, we have, you know, young girls who are working their hearts out to make the podium, and they're losing to transgender men. And uh, I guess, how do you see this playing out? Yeah, I think it's awful. I, I think it is uh, absolutely indefensible. And if you watch as that, uh, as that you know, the, the, the medals are given there, you know how big of a deal anybody who played high school sports, male or female, notice I said male or female, not male pretending to be female, making it to the state to compete for a state championship is the asp aspiring goal of every high school kid in America. This girl came in fourth place 
and she's not going to be able to compete at the state championship because a boy came in second. This is just wrong. And I wonder on a large degree, guys, if you are the parent, if you're the mom or the dad of this guy pretending to be a girl, how in the world do you feel like you can even support this decision? This is the antithesis of everything that sports should represent. And remember, for everybody out there who says this doesn't happen very often, it's happening more and more. Every Democrat in the House and every Democrat in the Senate voted against a bill that simply said boys should compete against boys in high school and girls should compete against girls. How do we ever get to the point where that is a controversial opinion and where 100% of sports fans don't agree with it? It's absolute craziness. Clay Travis, great to see you, my friend. We'll see you soon. Great to see you all as well. Thank you.